Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, first session of our writing bootcamp or essay for undergrad admissions. Uh, today, we're having uh, our first session of two. My name is Hector Carvajal, and we're here with my companion uh, Juan Manuel Molina, Elizabeth Arroyo, and we are part of the Education USA Mexico team. And each one of us is from a different state in the country. I'm myself based in Ciudad Juarez, Elizabeth is in uh, Jalisco, and Juan Manuel Molina is covering um, Chiapas and Tabasco. That's right? Yeah, I got it that <laughs> I got it right. And I would like to start this session by asking you to write, because we're, we're going to be writing in, in this uh, bootcamp. So I would like you to go to Menti, and uh, you have the code right there. And I would like you to write what, how do you like to be addressed during the, this whole session? And um, we're gonna see the results of your answers. Uh, let me go to the, right there. And let's see, let's see how would you like to be addressed? Mm, okay, Juanma is the first one. And I'm, I'm, we're using this because you're gonna notice as long as we're reviewing the, the session. In this case, uh, Juan Manuel is the, the name, but he wants to be addressed as Juanma. In my case, uh, for today, I would like to be addressed as Jesus, because that's my uh, second, uh, my middle name. But we have Patricio, Patricio, we have Chensi, and I don't know if we are missing someone. I think we're missing hmm. Patty, but I don't know if you want to be addressed as Patty or Patricia or I don't know. So we will wait for you uh, just one minute. And uh, the, the purpose of this exercise is to give you an insight about your person, yourself. So it is important that you think about your story, um, your values, and on other aspects that you are gonna be reviewing during this session. So we have Patricio, Chensi, Juanma, and Luis so far. So if you have any other answers, you can share with us later on the chat, where also you can share your questions if you want to. And um, let's move on into this first session of our uh, writing bootcamp. Awesome, thank you, Hector, thank you, Liz. Um, all right, so this, uh, I can do this, hold on. All right, so I wonder, uh, as, uh, Jesus said today, uh, we are going to be uh, meeting for these two days today and uh, on Thursday, uh, same time. Um, <clears throat> and I want to, we want to show you what you can expect from these two days. Um, in originally, we were going to be doing this as an open session for uh, other undergraduate students that are doing this process this year. But we thought that we wanted to do this very specifically for you, Opportunity Fund students, either from our athletes program or from our um, regular um, program. Uh, and <clears throat> so for today, uh, we are going to be covering two of these topics. Today, we're going to be talking about the purpose of an admissions essay and what is a strong storytelling. Uh, we will also be covering knowing yourself and some brainstorming ideas. Um, then on Thursday, we're going to be talking about the four elements of an essay, and we are going to wrap it up with outlining and how to improve your writing. So we're going to be doing these four um, kind of like topics and things that, so we want you to understand what to expect from these sessions. And we really, really want these to be sessions where you feel open to participate. Please open your mics, open your cameras. Uh, it is made just for you because we understand that writing these essays specifically for you, Opportunity Defense students, this is going to be a whole different challenge, a different kind of monster as uh, that people who, uh, students that are doing this process as regular um, applicants. 
So we wanted to do this. So this is just for you. So please, 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 please participate, ask questions. If there's something that is not clear, uh, please uh, ask away. Now, uh, you might have noticed or you might uh, have uh, received information from uh, either Elizabeth right here or from Liz or from Jesus. Uh, introducing themselves to you as their uh, your advisor for the writing process. So we're going to have, you already have an advisor. So for example, Shenzi, I'm uh, the advisor for you, right? Um, Jacqueline is Yandi, for example, and Patricio is um, um, Jesus, right? But for the essay process, you will have uh, essay advisors. And later, after these two months, you will come back with us to review your essays. So what would happen is that during the months of June, July, uh, and the first week of August, you will work with your um, essay writing advisor for the essay writing. And then later, you will continue working with your um, assessor principal. Right? So I just want to make sure that we understand this because I don't, we don't really want to confuse you. It's like, so, but I'm going to be working. I thought I was working with Yandi and then now he's introducing another person. It's just for the essay revision for these two months. So for example, and I want to use you, Shensi, as an example. So Shensi is my advisee for the Opportunity Funds Program. But during these two months, besides working with me on your submission plan and all that, you will also, besides that, we'll be working with um, with an advisor, uh, uh, an essay, essays, um, essay writing advisor. So here are some important dates for all of us to understand. So um, we will have these two sessions this week, and then you guys will have about a little less than a month to write your first draft with all the information that we're going to be giving you with all the essays that you're going to be reading and all that you are going to embark of your first adventure writing this essay and you need to submit it to your essay advisor by june 30th after that the the advisors for the essays are going to read it and give you feedback tell you what you're doing great tell you in what areas you need improvement and then for the month of July, you're going to be writing again your second draft, making um, changes and doing all those different things. And you should submit a, a second draft by August 7th. I have no idea what that says 2022. It should be 2023. Uh, but uh, so by August uh, 7th, uh, you should be doing your second draft. And then you're going to receive feedback again. You're not going to do a second draft with your advisors uh, from the essays. Now, the third draft is going to be with either Yandi, Jesus, or with me, right? And you will do your third, your fourth, your sixth, your 30th. You will be doing a lot of different drafts, right? For all the different schools and all that. But we want you to start uh, with a different uh, a different um, set of eyes that can guide you during this process at the beginning. Uh, so it, it, after August 7, it doesn't mean that you're not going to continue working with your essay. It means that you're going to continue with your um, uh, assessor principal, uh, but the starting point is going to be with your, uh, with your um, advisor for the essays. All right, now that we're done with some uh, housekeeping announcements and all that. Let's start with uh, um, with our topic today about what the essay is and how important it is. And as you guys have been learning during this process or in the last couple of sessions where we talked about the admission plan and the, the admission requirements and all that, you remember that we have the different things that we have to do for the application process and that we are trying to paint a picture of you, right? You're trying to paint the picture of you and you have, we can think of it, and I always like to say that we can think of it as a puzzle, right? And there's different parts of the puzzle 
that are going to, all of them together are going to uh, show you, are going to show uh, your phase, you, right? So each one of these pieces of the puzzle are going to be your extracurriculars, your the common app, your transcripts, uh, the standardized testing, your SAT, your TOEFL, or your your whatever essay you're going to be doing, the letters of recommendation from this professor, the letters of recommendation from your coach, uh, your resume if you're doing one, so all of those different things, all of them together are, are going to show and make up the picture of you. One of these parts, and I, I can venture to say that one of the biggest parts of the puzzle uh, and that one of those that are uh, without that piece, really the picture of yourself will be really, really, really incomplete. It's the essays. There's different kinds of essays we'll be talking about, but I just want you to understand that in this process, the essays are going to be a key element. They're part of the whole thing. Uh, and uh, But it just, I just can't stress this enough that they're going to be really, really, really important for your process. Now, I really like this visual because it helps you understand that all of those, all of the other parts that are going to be uh, uh, part of your application process, or even from your personality, I, all of them are going to come together with the essay. Because many times we think, what, if, what can I write about in my essay? And some people talk, can I write about my extracurricular activities? Yes, you can. But can I talk about my family? Yes, you can. Or should I talk about my identities? Of course you can. Or should I talk about challenges that I experienced? Yes. And the reason why all of those could be true and because it's it's is that we can bring all of those together and you can see in the center is the essays and you can see the bigger the bigger uh, circles, right? This one right here in your in the left. It's for example, uh, your the part of your life that is classes, grades, test scores, other academic information, all that. When you put it together with the other bigger one that uh, is your extracurriculars, experience, work, volunteer, your resume, when you bring those together, you can talk about your merits and awards, right? You can think of things that you do in class and extracurriculars, and there's a part that talk, it's, it's letters, I mean, awards. But when you talk about your academics and the bottom biggest circle that says personal qualities where you can talk about a part of you that is your family, personal context, identities, qualities, things you can, you can do from the perspectives of academics, bringing together personal qualities. That's what your letters of recommendations will, will, will talk about, right? Uh, so you don't, uh, you can talk about those, but also other people can talk about those. Um, and then if you bring together your extracurriculars with the, the bottom biggest circle that is your personal qualities, there's, that's what you could talk about responsibilities, for example, right? Your family responsibilities are think, things that you can do. But at the end, one thing that could uh, involve all of those aspects of your life is going to be your essays, right? In the essays, you could either talk about family responsibilities or the awards that you've received or causes or the involvement of personal qualities. And that's one of the things that I believe also makes this process a little bit more challenging. It's because there's a lot of things that you could do and talk about potentially. Uh, so part of, our, part of our idea today is to give you a little bit of tools where you can start thinking and writing down some ideas. And Liz is going to do a great uh, activity with you for uh, brainstorming, but uh, uh, we just I just wanted you to understand that the essay, it could go in many different ways and it talks about, it could talk about many parts of you. Now, what is an admissions essay? And it is really important that you understand that it's not a school essay. You're not writing for a class. And it's going to have a little bit of a, um, uh, differences from other kinds of essays that you will you will write or you have written probably for school. Um, these kinds of essays are also called personal statements. Uh, and I really like the word here that is a personal statement. And we're going to get into that in a little while. But uh, is one of the main requirements in the Common App or for the university application uh, when you are applying to, to the United States. 
It's also used in others in other countries, but the United States, I think, is one of the things that they uh, the admission process is is really different to others is this part of the essay. Um, there usually there's a word limit. Some some will tell you that there's a word limit. Some will not. But you don't write. You don't want to write a super long essay, right? But you want to be really strategic and smart about how you write and what you include. But many times is a, a page, a page and a half. The longest that I've seen are probably two pages, but personally, I think those are starting to go a little bit long. And what you need to think is that who's going to be reading this, right? So it's a, people in admissions that are, their job is to read essays for, for living, right? So they don't want to spend uh, too much time reading something that is too long. It doesn't go to the point is like, so it really needs to be well fought. Uh, but anyways, we'll talk about that a little bit later. But basically, this kinds of essays, you will, you will, we will see many different prompts, many different ideas. But basically, what this essays, uh, these essays, essays are supposed to do, they need to answer the question, who you are, and what is important for you. That's basically what these essays are doing. And you're going to do it in different ways, but it's basically who is Jesus, who is Liz, who is Juanma, right? Who is Jacqueline, who is Patricio, who is uh, Shenzi? It's like, who are you and what is important to you? That's basically what you're going to be writing in this essays. Now, <clears throat> one thing that we need, we need to understand also is that in recent years, especially after the pandemic, but it was already something happening before the pandemic, but as colleges and universities are putting less importance, less weight on test scores, uh, you will you will see in this process that a lot of universities are going SAT test optional, for example. They don't really, they're not making it a requirement, right? Uh, so, but that is that was an important piece of data that they had regarding if you were suitable for college or not. It was data that they received. So in when they don't have that data anymore, if they had, for example, five different sources of information from you, but now they only have four, well, it means that they're going to be looking into more details into those four pieces of information that they have now, because there's one that they're not asking anymore. So I'm, I don't want to say that the essays are becoming more important exactly. What I'm saying is that people might be reading this more in detail to get data and evidence that you are suited for college. They need to see evidence that you're going to be a good match, a good student for their school. And they used to do this. They used to have SATs to tell them information about that, but now they're going to be looking more into your, your grades, right? Into um, your letters of recommendation, into your TOEFL scores because those are not uh, becoming, um, uh, they're not becoming uh, optional. And one of those pieces is also going to be your essays. So with that, we have the personal statement, but also you're going to be writing a lot of supplemental essays. These are essays that, uh, these are additional, to the, the to the ones from the common app or from the main personal statement and these kind of have a similar vibe to it but they want a little more information from you they want to guide you a little bit into uh, in probably questions that they want to ask you there's a word limit very very specific word limit on this one of some of these are going to be very short and i want to show you some examples so you understand what what is that so the, the, the previous essays is like very open, is like, just tell me about you, what you like, who you are, and what is important to you. But these others, for example, the one from Tufts University, uh, this is the prompt they have for 2021, 2022. Uh, and uh, this is the prompt, it says, which aspects of the Tufts undergraduate experience prompt your application? In short, why Tufts, All right? 
uh, and you have to do it in 100 and 150 words. So that's not a lot of space. So it, really the challenge for many of these essays is not to write a lot, is how you can say the important things in fewer words. Uh, another one is it's cool to love. It's cool to love learning. What excites your intellectual curiosity? All right. So those are some, and you can go also in many different directions with these essays. And we're going to read some supplemental essays. I just wanted to show you some of those. There's there's more examples. The University of Florida has for the 2021-2022 uh, admission cycle. They have please provide more details on your most meaningful commitment outside of the classroom while in high school and explain why it was meaningful. This could be related to extracurricular activity, work, volunteer, academic activity, family responsibility, any other you know, classroom activity. So you can see that the other essay is really open really, but probably students go in a different direction and universities are saying, well, maybe I do want to know a little bit more and I'm gonna ask a little more specific questions as I allow the student to write a more open essay, I also need to know these, right? Colgate University has a great institution is diverse. It brings students of different socioeconomic backgrounds, races, ethnicities, and religions to campus. Colgate recognizes this and exposes students to a rich variety of perspectives and backgrounds in their educational and social experience. Tell us in 100 to 200, 150 to 100 words, how you have prepared to immerse yourself in a community such as, sorry, I need to move this, such as this or how you look forward to growing as a result of your experience at Colgate. So that's uh, that's um, something that is called in some in some institutions as a diversity essay. Sometimes it's the why us essay. Sometimes it's why this program essay. Sometimes it has to do with, um, it has to do with, we are known as the Phoenix because we come from the dead. So how do you compare yourself with a Phoenix bird, right? So there's many things that they can ask you. So be ready to, to write many of those. Uh, so it's not that you are like, you're going to write just one essay and that's going to be it. Uh, you will be writing, like, like I said at the beginning, many different essays and many different drafts. So that's why we want to start um, early in June, because you will be spending the next four or five months writing many essays. Now, um, going back a little bit to the purpose of the admissions essay and also now the supplemental essays, is that this is an opportunity for you to show you, basically. Your ideas, your thoughts, your aspirations, your dreams, your personal realities, your qualities, your context, to talk about you, right? Um, and we will see some examples of some, some essays tend to talk about a little bit more other people and they forget that this essay was about themselves. So this is your chance to highlight your personal positive qualities. Uh, and I wanna say positive, uh, it, it make a little bit more emphasis in positive because although you could talk about bad stuff about you, you always need to end up on a positive note. If you talk about, going through some challenges and you talk about problems that you have experienced, uh, you need to finish it up in a positive way. We as human beings, we love closure. We love, uh, our minds are looking for circles and, and uh, stories that have an ending. Uh, for example, I hate movies that don't have a circle ending, that leave you on the suspense. I hate those but it's because our minds are built to circle back stories. So if you talk about some bad experience, we need to know how that bad experience is gonna help you grow or, or help you to become who you are. But you wanna you, you want talk about your values, honesty, integrity, commitment, morality, perseverance, empathy, leadership, show those things, right? And we're, we're gonna tell you a little bit more on that. Um, but help people understand that the admissions committee Help them understand more about you beyond your grades. They will have a document with your grades, right? They will have, oh, Juan Manuel has a, a B in algebra and then a C minus in social science and blah, blah, blah. They have that. 
So let's talk about things beyond your grades and your scores. Also, this is a document that uh, it's going to prove that you are ready for college writing, right? Even sometimes potentially under seeing that you have a, a good proficiency in English, right? So they will think, uh, they will think if this person cannot write an essay for this, probably they're not going to be do uh, do well in school, right? So give them a better idea of the type of person that you are and will be accepted into their community, right? Basically is who are we accepting? Are we accepting a good person that's going to be a good fit for a program? We cannot see that through the scores and through the SAT or through the TOEFL. We're going to see that through the essay. So remember that you are not going to be the only one applying for the schools. It is very likely that you're going to be competing with at least two or 3,000 other students for very few spots, right? Only a few small group uh, are actually admitted. So it's really important that you write about special experiences and how those experiences have changed your life, have made you who you are, and that help you grow, right? And how those experiences inform you on what you want to study or why you want to go to a certain school. You can write about interests, you can write about identities, you can talk about personal backgrounds, you can talk about loved ones. Many people write about their parents, about their dogs, about their sports, about something, or even it's a combination of all. So the topics are really broad and big, and that's what makes this process challenging. But remember the purpose of why you're writing this essay while you're writing uh, the purposes and who is going to be reading this essay. Now, um, let's, let's think about storytelling. And I want you, please, please, um, everyone can participate. Do you know someone who is a good storyteller? Can you think of someone you can say that is a really good storyteller? Or this is the other thing. Or can you think of someone that is not a good storyteller? Someone that you would say, uh, here we go again with the same story or, uh, or I don't know. Or maybe, maybe also I, I can think of that people that who are people who are good storytellers are also good joke tellers. Can you think of someone? And if you do, uh, you can give us examples. You can open your mic. And, and tell us, or you can write down, maybe not the name if you don't want to, but how are you related to that person? Is it a friend? Maybe it's your grandpa, maybe it's one of your aunts, your brother, a cousin. Tell me, do you know someone? Jesus, you know someone? Well, not someone in particular, but uh, I was thinking about comedians. Comedians are mm -hmm. very good storytellers because they, they build on the story and at the end that they have a good joke sometimes. So yeah, I think comedians are uh, good storytellers. Yeah, I can think of people who are not good storytellers that tell the end of the joke before they actually, and then they confuse everything. And then it's like, oh yeah, nothing to just there, forget it, <laughs> right? Because they got ahead of themselves. Uh, yeah, so yeah, jokes are good storytellers. Uh, Shansi says, my dad is not a good storyteller, <laughs> but he tells good jokes. Oh, so maybe he's good with short stories. Uh, and not really with long with long stories. I I wonder. I'm 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 curious, Chancey, if you want to explain a little bit more. Um, why do you think that your dad is not a good storyteller? Um, I my dad is. I can say my dad is a good storyteller, and at the same time is a bad storyteller. And I have evidence for both. But I can share it with you a little bit more. Um, once um, if you Chancey want to talk a little bit more on that. Patricia says I have a few friends who are good storytellers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now think of a, a, and also Patricia, a follow up to also what I, I said to Shensi. What makes them good storytellers, or what makes them bad storytellers? Shensi, tell us. Well, he's more like like what you said. He says like he starts laughing before he tells a joke. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like the process is more enjoyable mm -hmm. before the joke. So. That's why he's not, but he also says like the same stories over and over. 
and that's why maybe it's not funny for us anymore but like he starts laughing so mm. and he makes people laugh so i don't know he's like a mix of both i don't know mm. and you know i really like thank you for sharing that because i think it depends on the purpose i guess because if the purpose is to make you laugh and he gets ahead of himself and he he starts telling the joke but he never finishes it because i think we all know someone like that but through his laugh he's just making you crap up again right is he's just making you laugh too so if the objective was to make you laugh he's doing it through bad storytelling so he's getting to the point i guess right uh but it's interesting thank you for sharing that chancy uh what about the rest what do you think makes a good teller a good storyteller good or a bad storyteller bad. Jesus, what do you think? Oh, I think that uh, sometimes uh, bad storytellers start with some point and then they lose focus and they start mm -hmm. talking about something else and then you miss the whole point and maybe you don't see the, the beginning of the end. And I think that's what makes someone a, a bad storyteller. Mm, yeah i think we all remember we can think of people that they start with a story and then you don't know how you got to a different kind of story or uh, for example they give you irrelevant details or not that are not helping the story that is my dad we would tell them is like but why are you telling us this and how is it related to grandpa going to the other place of like you're losing us through unnecessary details um yeah but on the other hand, there are a certain amount of details that we need in order to feel as we are in the story, right? So there's there's a there should be like a balance of that. But I totally understand what you're saying. Uh, people who get off track, right, of the main story, um, people who don't give enough details, uh, and uh, also I really think that. A good storyteller is building up. Uh, think we can think of the, like a good movie. A movie is a story that we're being told. So a good movie is giving you just enough details to keep you interested. And uh, I really love those movies that have you on the edge of your seat because you really know what you're really involved in the movie. Because, but but one of the biggest things that they are doing is that they they know how what information to give you to keep you interested in just enough but don't give don't give it all away until the end right so that's also i think it's a really really good uh way of uh, telling a story um Shenzi says i also have a friend who loves reading so when he's explaining like the books plot uh-huh you end up saying oh i need to read oh yeah that's that's a really good person telling a story that may, uh, you end up feeling that you really want to, and probably the book is not that good, but the way they say it and the way they explain it makes you also want to read it, right? Maybe, I don't know, but maybe also the book is really good. Yeah, well, you guys have a, have a really good idea of what makes a story, not only the story, uh, it, because a story could be really good, but the person who is telling the story could either amplify it and make it better or it could ruin the story, right? It could ruin the story. Now, the reason I really like to talk about storytelling and, and things like that is because you're basically, is what you're going to be doing with your assets. You're going to be telling a story. Uh, it's a narrative that you're doing. So you want to do it through different ways. You want to do it so, through the use of effective language. Um, so allowing the reader to easily understand and how events and things are connected together. Uh, also, you're getting through ideas, emotions. A good storyteller recounts an event and helps the reader see the event through the writer's eyes. If I'm writing, 
I want you to feel like you're seeing things the way I was seeing those as I was writing or as I lived it. You provide enough context to understand where things happened, what was going on, so I can understand um, in, in, in what circumstances those things happen. Uh, it's also really good to understand that there's uh, cultural differences between how stories are told and our native language, for example, Spanish, and in contrast to the American context and the way Amer uh, the way stories are told in other cultures and other languages. Uh, and then you want to let your reader understand your stories and your experiences the way you want them to understand them. You don't want to leave out spaces and leave things to their interpretation. You really need to tell them how they should be feeling about what they're reading about you. And you have to first understand yourself. And this is a really key. You need to understand first you and your experience and make sense of those so you can bring others into the world that you're trying to experience. So now for, for this, I, I'm going to give you, I'm gonna share a document with you. I'm gonna put it in the chat. Let me see where the chat is. So in the chat, I'm going to, oh, sorry about that. Cause I want you to, read and this document is going to be important for you not just for this session but can i do that hold on how can i send something through the chat oh it's because it's in the waiting room sorry 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 i got it now i was trying to send it to the waiting room No way. Attach. Oh, it needs to be a link. Hold on. Then. Hmm. Bear with me for a second. I'm sorry. Here we go. Now let's see if you guys have access to that link. I'm gonna open the link. Right. You should have access now. Let me show you where, where um, the, um, the link. Ah, I see you guys there. Okay, so that is a document with many different assays that we have collected through with um, a couple of years with different students. And I want I want us to um, read one of these essays and talk about them uh, for a short period of time. So I'm gonna give you probably five to seven minutes. Let's do the math is hard essay. Let me let me show you. Let me find it, and I'll. Um, I'll do that. I'll give you the. Nope. This one. It's on page. What page is it? Eleven. It's page eleven. 11. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. No. The math is hard essay. So I'm going to give you five minutes to read it. And what I want you to understand or read in this essay, and uh, let's let's talk about the um, things that that we, we we we're doing here. Let's that, let's focus on effective use of language, storytelling, uh, and what are we learning from that writer? Okay, what are we learning from the writer? So yeah. So let's start. You you should you have access, it, but I'm gonna keep it open also here, just in case you want to read it in my screen too. All right. So five minutes. Start reading.
right. Now let me ask you uh, a few questions. How, wh where do you see that this person is a good storyteller? Please feel free to open your mics and tell us. Yes, Patricia. She provides personal anecdotes of her experiences. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's a personal anecdotes. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you can you give us uh, where where you see that, for example? Well, she begins the essay by uh, telling us about an experience she had in class mm -hmm. um, when the teacher asked her to complete this math problem, uh, but she couldn't because she was too confused and didn't understand the subject properly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I really like how she's... Um... She's giving us details on how she felt. Because I think that's when, what's an important thing with these essays is um, helping you sort of like feel what she's feeling. So she's giving details like, I felt paralyzed. I didn't know what to do. Um, I, uh, she, as I stood up and walked to the front, and she's telling us already feeling out of breath and my hands clammy, right? She's describing, and I think we can all relate to a moment where we have felt like this, maybe on different things, um, maybe on the sim on similar things, but you, we're we're understanding that this is something that was stressful for her, right? And she's telling us that it was about math. Now, there's one thing that many times happens is like. This is at the beginning of an essay that started with a story. And many times I have seen people who start essays with stories that they don't really relate to the rest of the, the it's, it's a shocking story, but they just want to use a shocking story to get this to the, the, the admissions attention, but then it's not related to the rest of the essay. But here she is really directing this experience to how she saw math and how it was something difficult. And I really like how she links it to the end. When we, and remember where I told you about circling back to things, when she comes back, uh, she says, my math journey has taught me, no matter what the subject, that I'm a young woman capable of anything, right? So you get this feeling of it was something difficult and she's over, um, coming, right? What else? What else can you see in this essay? What you liked, what you didn't like? Tell me, what else have you seen? Um, Chancy and Jacqueline, please feel free to participate. Yes, Jacqueline. Yes, Jacqueline, you can open your mic if you want. Hmm. She might be facing this, the same problem I, I had before. Mm, probably because I saw that she connected and disconnected. So um, maybe Jacqueline, you can try getting off and on again, or you can type your comment also. Um, but yeah, Shensi, you wanted to say something too? Yes, I'm sorry you hear a lot of noise. I'm not in my house. I said that um, she's like letting us inside her brain like with a conversation with herself telling mm. us feels and everything and what she went through but at the end she tells us um why she decided to study that and why like she mm, fell in love with math basically mm, yeah yeah i yeah i really like that what you said that she's letting us know the conversation that she's having with herself yeah, that's that's really cool. Thank you for saying that. Let's try again, Jacqueline. Let's see if you can. Do it. Yes, probably. Go ahead. Oh, man. 
We can't hear you. Then maybe, yeah, maybe try to um, share your comment in the chat. Um, yeah, because we're not able to hear you. Sorry. Okay. Well, we. Oh yeah, she there. Yeah, that you can see the order that she's where she's coming from and how the progression. I guess that will be that that the thing that the progression of where she started, what she has learned. And remember that we, I said that about the positive, the, keeping it positive at the end. She's not just sharing, I'm bad at math, right? And I'm not going to do anything about that. Uh, she's like, what am I going to do to overcome? And also, which would might seem as a problem that is not that, that rare. I mean, a lot of people have problems with math. And it's like, if you want to write about, yeah, 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 like one more person. But if you decide to write about it in a different way, you can you can bring that to a very good ending. And one of the things that I really like about this also is that this final paragraph is really powerful because as she's also linking that to this experience has guided me to what I want to study in the university. So coming from I hate math and I don't like it to now I want to study math, like economic statistics. And especially she brings that into context when says, as a young Caribbean Latina, I want to represent my demographic. She's understanding that it's a field that doesn't really have a lot of women and also Latina women in that. Uh, so more young girls can take these challenges like her, right? Uh, so again, I really love it because she describes it really well. It's a math journey. Uh, now I'm gonna pause here because I, I uh, there's more content that I, we're gonna share with you, but you will have homework. Your homework uh, for this will be so you can read the essay. That is, uh, you can read all of them if you want, but for homework for tomorrow, you are going to be reading the first uh, girl in electronics and also the Boston University essay. Both of them are there, um, read for them, but um, those two, we're gonna start the next session with these these two. Now I'm gonna uh, give the floor to um, Hector. Do you have the presentation on or? I do, I do. I can, I can present it. Yeah, thank you. And one important aspect of this uh, essay bootcamp, it's about how to put all this information into paper. So one of the things that we would like to work on from now on, it's on the basics. How do you start to write an essay? So we're gonna, let's get started. And we're gonna provide a, a couple of tips for you. And one of the main questions that you need to ask yourself is what's your story? As we saw in this previous essay, uh, the student has this mad conflict and this mad uh, trigger for her in order to um, study economics and maths. So that's her story about uh, the career she wanted to pursue. So, this is the first question that you need to ask. What is your story? What is Patricia's story? What is Chance's story? What is Jacqueline's story? So I know it's too general, but we're gonna work on that and then we're gonna do it so particular. It's so personal for you. Because remember, this is a personal statement. So we need to cover all those aspects about this. Also, you need to ask yourselves, what makes you different from others? Because it's gonna be, it's gonna sound harsh, but you're not gonna compete with uh, another students from another parts of the con of the world, and they might have a similar story. But you need to focus, and it, you need to find something that makes you unique about any other student and any other part of the world. So maybe living in Mexico gives you some input, gives you something extra, gives you something different from another person living in India, for example, or in Germany, 
who is applying for the same spot in that university. So what makes you different from other students? That's another thing that you need to have in mind at the time that you are gonna start to write your essay. Also, what have you learned so far by being a Mexican student and, and studying your uh, licenciatura or your high school program? What have you learned so far about it? What opportunities you, you see you might be missing or what opportunities you had because of the, the region of the country you're living in? That's, that's something that you need also to consider at the time of starting this process of, of writing your essay, your personal statement. Uh, also, it is important that you uh, write down what you have achieved or what your, your accomplishment. If I ask you, what are some of the accomplishments of the person who was writing the essay of I hate math? Can you tell, tell me one accomplishment that she had, for example? You can type it in on the chat. Maybe if you wanna just open your mic and tell me what is one of the accomplishment the student had. Yes, Patricio? Yes, she managed to understand uh, the math topics that confused her at first. Yes, and that's a, that's a great uh, approach for this essay because sometimes you hear about all this accomplishment, like uh, I won this award, and I got the scholarship, but the best thing that you portray or to write down an accomplishment could be also, I was struggling with math, but I focus, I study, I read, and eventually I overcome this accomplishment of uh, my lack of math knowledge. So that's a good way also to portray and to, read and to write down those ideas. Also, you need to ask yourself about your future goals. What is your plan? Short, mid, long term. All those all those goals you need to also think about those. And also, what do you want to study? What do you want to study? Because there's plenty of programs. There's plenty of careers. There's plenty of areas uh, for working. But what and why do you want to study this area in which you are gonna try to make a a get in? So it is very important to have all these questions in your mind because at the end, this is going to be the, the basics and it's going to be what you're going to build on for a, for a future essay. Can you get it to the next slide, please? Okay, so we're going to start this process by one activity that it's called brainstorming, which is recommended to be the first step in your writing and also you're gonna be doing an exercise later on after this slide with Liz, but it is recommended to be the first step in writing because you are bringing all those ideas that you have in mind. As you see, there's plenty of content, plenty of material that you can work on, but it is important to have those in a paper maybe, in a Word document, somewhere else where you can manipulate them and see them and work on those. So it is recommended the first step the first step also because you can see what is you're going to be your main topic or the focus of your essay so it is very important to organize ideas uh, we're going to provide you with some of the, the main things that you can talk about in your essay so also it's very important because after this you can work on an outline which is the let's say it the structure of your essay, so which it's also very important because you don't you don't lose focus when you work in an outline because you know how to start, how does the second part, and then how it ends. So that's the best point about the outline. Also, you have more control over your ideas, as we were saying before. Uh, but good story, but storytellers sometimes start with a point and then go to a point uh, B instead of going to a point B. So it's important to have more control over these ideas and also not wait up for, for ideas to pop up because uh, some of the things that writers face, it's a block, control, uh, block for writers, which I think it's, it's very bad. But if you don't wait for ideas to pop up and just start to write in those ideas and try to build on those, it is, it is better than just sit and, and try to the idea to come up by themselves. So it is a bit a good thing doing brainstorming. 
And also uh, the brainstorm is gonna help you out to discover different aspects of your topic. For example, in the previous essay that we read, uh, there's a lot of aspects about math that the writer uh, used very, very convenient on a, in a way that you engage in that essay and you wanna know more about her story. And at the end, uh, all those overachievements and all, all those problems that she had overcome and become something positive about her, her persona. So yeah, that's gonna be working on brainstorming. And Liz is gonna be taking over this. Yes, thank you, Hector. Hi, everyone. Very nice to, to see you here. And um, then we're going to start working. Um, could you please go back to the, to the slide, please? Thank you. All right, so as Hector already said, um, okay, so brainstorming is um, a very useful uh, tool for you to start helping your brain um, uh, start moving, okay, all those thoughts and memories and to ha start having um, new ideas or maybe um, reminding things that you did in the past and but first of all, we need to identify your values. Okay, so all of us have different values um, according to what we learned from our families, from, um, from our surroundings, okay? And it is important that you find which are your core values. So in this activity, um, you're going to identify both your core values and your aspirations. It is very important that you identify those aspirations that are the ones that are going to push you and to motivate you um, in order to move forward throughout all this process. So um, we already shared a PDF document in the chat box. So you're, this is going to be here a very brief activity because um, okay you know you we need to move for, move forward and there is a lot of information that we want to share with you and you're going to take five minutes to choose your answers in this PDF so now could you please change the image to the PDF thank you so it says the values exercise so in order to start um, helping you to find out your values, okay, so um, we, I took this exercise from, um, from the college essay guy. So that is um, a very nice um, uh, website with a lot of resources. And it says, here's my other favorite brainstorming exercise, and it will help you figure out the second half of your essay in about five minutes. Okay, so it says, to begin, pick your top 10 values from the list below. You see that there are a lot of values, okay? Yeah, but you're going to take only five minutes like to read very, very fast. And it is also the intention um, also for of this exercise is that uh, you don't, right now, don't think too much about which are those values, um, which are your most important values. Just look at them and you can choose them by just saying, okay, this one, I like this one. Oh, this one um, sounds very nice with, um, um, very nice. And it is, um, or it resonates with me. Okay, so take, um, take 10 values from this list. Could you please go a little bit down, scroll down? Okay, so you can see that there are a lot of them down please scroll down scroll down scroll down scroll down 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 okay and okay then you're going to pick okay your top five values from all this list okay so write down your top five values and after that you're going to pick your top three values and at the end you're going to to choose only one value. What is your core value? Okay, so, okay, you're going to 
to go from five to three to one. Okay, so please take five minutes to do this activity. And could you please scroll up again? Yeah, thank you. So that the students can see some of them. So I'm sure maybe all of you guys have this, um, this document with you in your computers now. So you can uh, scroll up or down. So to read all the words there, okay? So take five minutes, please. And then you're going to share your, um, your results with all of us, okay? Remember to make your list of 10 values, then from 10 to 5, from 5 to 3, and from 3 to 1. Two minutes. One minute.
Okay, so hopefully all of you could get your core value. Hopefully all of you could get from 10 to five to three to one core value. For example, I can tell you by, and something that is important is that your values could change, okay, by the time you also change and grow. Um, this is important to know, yeah, maybe your core value um, right now is not the same as last year or like two years ago. Yeah, for example, my core value now could be um, health and fitness. Why? Because um, it is important for me because it I mean, um, it is important to have a balanced life and because I needed to to give more attention to um, the hours that I sleep, how I, I eat, um, you know. So um, tell me, please. Uh, well, first, I, I need to know if your core value, if you if all of you got your core value, could you please just say yes or no? Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. Jackie, very good. So Jackie, Patricio, yes. Very good. The rest of you. Okay. Very good. So Jackie, could you please share with all of us, which is your core value and why is it? Why is it your core value? Okay. Very good. Patty, helping others. Okay. Uh, why is it your core value? Why did you choose it as your core value? Why is it so important in your life? Um, can you activate your microphone? Yes, Hector. I think she, she was having uh, problems, problems with her mic previously. So oh. maybe she's typing. So maybe uh, you can okay. go to another student and, and maybe we can read later on the, the answer of Jack. Yeah, thank you, Hector. All right. So, um, all right. So let's continue with Patricio. Okay, so could you please share your core value with all of us and why did you choose it? Yes, my core value is knowledge. And I think I chose that one because I'm a person who is constantly looking to know and learn about stuff and the stuff that's all around this. Um, and so, yeah, that's why I think it's one of my, if not the main value I have. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Very good, Patricio. Thank you. Okay, one more person who'd like to share his or her core value with all of us. And why is it your core value? Why is it your core value? Um, me. Yeah, mine, mine is faith. And because, well, I've had like a lot of experiences that thanks to like what I believe in and believe in myself in myself and like having faith in a lot of stuff um I've accomplished a lot of um uh really hard trials in my life so that's why I chose faith Awesome. Very good, Chancy. Thanks for sharing, guys. Um, and, okay, because of lack of time, um, we're going to move to the next activity. But, okay, it is important that you see that your core value, you can talk about um, maybe, I don't know, a lot of time about your core value and all the things that you have accomplished or that you have done throughout this last year's. So thanks to that core value, you have uh, grown, you have learned. So this is a very good start for all of you, okay? So next activity, okay, so for homework also, I invite you to read all the values that you, that you saw there in the PDF document and uh, think about a little bit deeper about um, choosing and re-evaluating maybe about your values there, okay? So the next activity, 
we are going um, a little bit deeper also throughout these activities. It says, okay, this is about brainstorming questions. There are questions that will help you now that you have your values there. Okay, uh, thanks Juanma. Juanma has already shared also the link in the chat box so that you can click on it and have uh, the document with you. And this time, throughout the questions okay so um you are going to go deeper and you are going to reflect okay on also some uh topics that will help you um having more uh, material to write about so it says uh, choose one or more questions from Mrs. Stephen's activity in the essay brainstorming questions and write your answers taking five minutes in this activity. So you're going to take also five minutes. All right. You're going to see that there are a lot of questions there. OK, so originally we're going we were going to go to breakout rooms, but because, OK, you are uh, only um, five students there. Um, so let's do it. Uh, right here sharing with everyone. So it says, um, these are not the exact essay, essay prompts. These are warm ups to get your, your ideas flowing. Even if you could answer in one word or a few words, free write for a few minutes on each question. So there are sometimes some um, wrong ideas about ourselves, okay? So sometimes um, we can think about, oh, I'm, I'm terrible, uh, I don't have creativity, I don't have any ideas, my writing is awful, you know, all these uh, negative mis we have some misconceptions about ourselves. But okay, throughout these questions, we, uh, we want you to see that th those are misconceptions, actually, yes, so that all of us have that capability, and, and we can develop that ability, all right, to write and to express our feelings, our thoughts, by writing. Okay, so um, in five minutes, you're going to choose the questions that you like the most or the question that you like the most. Okay, and you are going to re you're going to write um, for five minutes, the answers. Okay, for example, what keeps you up at night? All right, so you can write down. Um, well, sometimes I wake up at one a.m. in the morning and I go to the fridge and get something to eat. And that's your answer. That's OK. Go to the next question. What fascinates you? And maybe that is your catchy question. All right. And then you're going to start writing about that. OK, something that I fa that it's fascinating for me is I don't know, uh, being a volunteer uh, to work for uh, in, in for the environment. Um, for example, I like to help dogs and cats in this way and the other. And maybe that is your catchy question. So that inspires you to write more. OK, so we invite you now to go through these questions and to answer them. Uh, not in order. OK, choose the ones that you like and write down for five minutes, even if it's a very short answer. It doesn't matter okay but the, the important thing is that you start writing okay so all right so we start now please take five minutes start writing
one minute. Okay, let's stop here. And please write down in the chat box, how many questions did you answer? Write down if they were two or one or three or four, how many questions did you answer? Shensi wrote three. Okay, answer three. Mm -hmm. Jackie one. Okay, so one catchy question, right? Okay, what about the rest? How many questions did you answer? Okay, in the meantime, um, all right, I'd like to invite two of you who'd like to, um, who share, uh, to share with us. Okay, what did, you, what did you answer? What was your question and what did you answer? Only, only the, the question that you answered the most or that you found the most interesting, could you please share please a question and answer? Um, I can. Yeah, Shansi, go ahead. Uh, well, oh, just one, right? Yeah, just one. Okay, well, um, what has made you strong, independent, resilient? And I wrote my parents allowing me to live in another country. All right, so, okay, that question, uh, I, I love that question and also your answer because Okay, so you can, you can tell us a lot about that, right? Because living in another country, wow, it's a whole different uh, experience, full of, of many experiences, and you can say a lot about that, okay? So how you, uh, what you learned, how you grew, and many things. Okay, very good. So I invite you, Shensi, to go deeper through that question and to expand your answer, okay? Very good. So another student who'd like to share his or her answer with us. So, Patricia, I think you can activate your microphone, right? Would you like to share with us your answer? Yes. Okay. So, uh, my, well, one of the questions I answered was, um, what is your wildest ambition? And mm -hmm. I answered that by saying it is, uh, but by saying that it's to live, well, to learn how to live in a different country. I think that will be a great experience and it will be a little challenging as well. 
Yeah, nice. Thank you, Patricio. And yeah, this is a very interesting and I think that's why all of you are here, right? <laughs> because you would like to experience, to have that experience of living abroad and learning new things. And okay, so you can also expand, okay, your answers, um, your answer, okay, by saying what your aspirations are also and uh, from what you have heard, what you have lived, etc. Okay, very good. Thanks for sharing. So the invitation is that also, uh, Juanma, can you scroll down, please? Okay, so there are also other questions, more specific questions there, okay, that are related to academics, Yes, also some questions related to activities. And scroll down, please. Down, down, down. And yeah, there. And also about life events. Okay, so we invite, invite you to go through those questions and choose the ones that resonate more uh, with you and that inspire you to start writing. Okay, and there are also um, other questions related to that will help you to narrow down also your uh, your answers. And it says once you've created your list of topics, you'll need to start narrowing them down for each topic. Ask yourself. Okay, so these are other questions that will help you. <coughs> sorry, will help you out having more ideas and start narrowing down, okay, all those ideas that started here, okay, to go deeper and to go like clearer, okay? Very good, thank you, Juanma. And thank you um, all for participating. And, okay, so the next, um, the next activity, for homework, you're going to choose at least five prompts from each section of the essay brainstorming questions, document and write about them, including details. Details are going to be very, very important. Okay. And right now, don't judge your writing. That very, very important because we tend to judge our writing and sometimes we say, oh, that could be um, here very cheesy or oh, I don't like this. I, I, you know, okay, these kinds of judgments. So uh, take those judgments out from your writing because right now it's just brainstorming. From that brainstorming that you're going to do by answering these questions, then you're going to choose Yes, all those um, more important elements from your writing in the future. But right now, okay, stop being judgmental with yourself and with your writing. So it says this exercise will help you bring out and organize your thoughts, getting your ideas flowing. That's what we, um, we are going to start doing. Okay, help your ideas flowing, stop being judgmental, Okay, and decide which topics will be the most important to include in your essay. Okay, so this is homework for Thursday. Okay, thank you. You are muted, Tuvanamo. Yes, thank you. Uh, well, I think we're gonna call it a day for, uh, for today. Uh, and you have then homework. Make sure that you download the, you have the links that we shared uh, and also that you have the Word document, the link for the Word document that I shared with you uh, for the two essays that you're going to read and the exercises that, that, exercises that Liz uh, shared with you today. Um, and then for next, uh, for, for the next session on Thursday, Please uh, thank you for being here in time. You guys are amazing. So we're going to continue with 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 this, um, and yeah, we're gonna have a uh, happy writing um, summer. So thank you so much, everyone. Yeah, um, that's gonna be for um, for next what is extra showing. So it's gonna be for Thursday. So thank you everyone for being here, and we will see you then um, on Thursday. All right. Have a good one, everyone. Goodbye.